once more, and we welcome Mr. Juma, lesson 13, to continue the application of electrolysis. So in lesson 12, we looked at um, five applications, that is the um, application of electrolysis, where we had extraction of reactive metals, electroplating, uh, galvanizing, sacrificial protection. And um, now we are going to look at uh, one more uh, uses of um, electrolysis, which is this one, manufacture of sodium hydroxide and chlorine. So these two are manufactured in uh, mercury cell, where we have brine as the, the electrolyte. So I want to simplify this diagram to demystify, because when you see the whole drawn in the uh, diagram drawn in the textbooks, it might scare you, yet you need to master the structure and the functioning of the mercury cell because this is an examinable area, it is an area that is quite often tested even in the national exam. So drawing stru two structures like this, it is easy to master. So if you want not to master it well, just draw two identical structures like this. Now in the upper one, insert the carbon and electrodes, so this will act as our anode, which is made of graphite. Now the reason why graphite is used here is because chlorine will be discharged here and chlorine does not react with carbon. So here we are going to have brine being fed in. So the upper part there we are going to have brine fed in there. So once you have these two identical like this, so in this upper part, so this is now where we have the anode, so you pour in brine and uh, remember, brine is concentrated sodium chloride solution. So it will be poured in this first tank. So we have two tanks, this one and this. So as I said, start by growing these two identical tanks. So in the upper tank, this is where chlorine is manufactured. So when you pour the brine, so let's say, up to a certain level, let's say up to there. So you have here brine. So when now the circuit is complete, the chloride ions will be attracted to this one, to the positive electrodes. So because of the high concentration, the chloride ions, so remember the solution contains chloride ions and hydroxide ions as the anions. So we also have the hydroxide ions as well. Let me not ignore that. They will also be attracted. But because of the high concentration of the chloride ions from the factors that we discussed earlier on in the other lessons, chloride ions are preferentially discharged. So the reaction at the reaction at the anode, you will have chloride ions from the solution. They lose electrons forming chlorine gas like that. And then now to complete this diagram. We connect this upper tank and the lower tank by a film of flowing mercury. So here, just going to um, do that. So the red here is going to represent the film. So the film becomes, the, the flowing film of mercury becomes our cathode. So this is the cathode. So this flowing film all the way down. now our cathode. So 
So we we'll have the lamp there on the controller, the mercury lamp. So this is a moving film of mercury as the cathode. So that is our cathode. Then alongside at the bottom here we have steel grids. You can also even use graphite here, steel grids for these ones. So over this one, this is where the reaction of producing sodium hydroxide is going to take place. So these are steel grids, but you can also use graphite. So the sodium ions, the sodium ions and the hydrogen ions, so you have sodium and hydrogen ions, will be attracted to the cathode, which is the moving film. Sodium ions, hydrogen ions. So they will be attracted to the moving film. Where, now, considering the factors that affect preferential discharge of ions, in this case, sodium, the mercury, being the cathode, this one favors discharge of sodium ions. So the mercury favors discharge of sodium ions. So instead of hydrogen ion being discharged, as we saw that the electron uh, factors that affect preferential discharge of ions, we have the position of the ion, the electrochemical series, concentration. So here, this one, chlorine is discharged because of concentration, the high concentration of chloride ion. But here, sodium ions are discharged because of this one, the nature, the nature of electron. And we saw the nature of the electron can affect, can influence which electron, uh, which ions to be discharged at that given electron. So in this case, sodium ions will be discharged. So the equation for the reaction and the cathode then, we are going to have, um, so reaction at cathode, so we will have sodium ions will be discharged, so they will gain the electron and then be discharged as sodium because of the, so they will be discharged as sodium. So usually in the reaction is thermic, so because of the high temperature, sodium atom discharge and liquid form. As we said, balance the electrons. Two electrons are lost at the anode. Two electrons must be gained. So for sodium to gain two electrons, you need two moles of sodium ions. So you need two moles of so that means two moles of sodium liquid will be discharged. So here you will have chlorine. sodium chloride. So here you have chlorine being discharged from the here. So at the anode, so chloride ion from this equation. So chlorine leaves where it is collected and stored in pressurized tanks. So chlorine is poisonous. It is not allowed into the atmosphere. And then chlorine has many uses. As I mentioned, the other lesson can be used to, man to manufacture hydrochloric acid, detergents, bridges. So for that reason, uh, it is not allowed in the atmosphere, particularly because of the poisonous nature. So the upper part we are through. So the sodium ions are discharged as sodium liquid. So they will move. So immediately they are discharged, the following reaction takes place. The sodium liquid produced combines with mercury liquid also, that film is a liquid form, forming what we call sodium amalgam. So this is called sodium amalgam. Sodium amalgam. So, so
sodium amalgam flows down all the way this side. Then here, in the second tank down here, water is added. So you add water. So down here, so water will be from here. So here you have water. So when this sodium amalgam reaches this steel grid, it reacts so with the water over the steel grid. So you will have now the sodium amalgam reacting with water. And this reaction produces sodium hydroxide. Solution. It produces mercury back and it also produces hydrogen gas. So this reaction is very important. Three important products are formed. So this is the sodium hydroxide we are looking for. Chlorine was manufactured in tank one. In tank two we have sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. The mercury produced this mercury is recycled. So the mercury is recycled. So it goes back to that flowing film of mercury. Because it is poisonous and it is also uh, very expensive. This reduces the cost of production. So it is recycled to reduce the cost of pro production and also to reduce the pollution effect by mercury. So the sodium hydroxide formed then is evaporated to form sodium hydroxide solute. So sodium hydroxide solution evaporate to get sodium hydroxide solid. Now this solid form depending on the evaporation method that is going to be done or crystallization method, you can have either pellets or flakes, depending on how the evaporation is going to be done, then you have it in solid form as either pellets or as flakes. So here, hydrogen, so here we have, so here you will have now your sodium hydroxide exits there. The sodium hydroxide liquid exists here. This hydrogen formed, you have hydrogen there. The mercury goes back that, it keeps flowing back like that. Then with time, this solution becomes diluted, so it has to be laid out. So here you are going to have dilute sodium chloride solution. Then now you add more fresh brine like that and the process uh, repeats itself so you keep doing that again and again and that is how those uh, three important products are produced that is sodium hydroxide mercury and hydrogen gas then i had pro uh, promised to project some notes in lesson 11 because i plan to have my lessons not more um, between uh, 15 to about 20, between 15 to 25 minutes, so it was uh, beyond my lesson limit. I want to have shorter uh, lessons instead of having long lessons. So I'm going to project now the, uh, the notes on your screen for all that we have discussed, uh, part of lesson 12 and part of this lesson 13. And then we'll have just one more lesson to go to wind up, that will be quantitative treatment of electrolysis, so we discuss that, and that will be the end of electrochemistry. So up next we will discuss lesson 14, that, but for now let me project the notes of what we have discussed so far. So here are the notes for those who are interested in uh, taking the notes for application of electrolysis. So the first one is said extraction of reactive elements, and in this case reactive metals, electroplating, sacrificial protection so you can just pause and then uh, 
uh, copy those notes. Then we also have galvanizing, then purification of metals. So for purification of metals, it will be the next part there. So there we go, purification of metals. There are the notes. Then finally, manufacture of sodium hydroxide and chlorine. So that is the mercury cell for the manufacture of sodium hydroxide and chlorine as well as hydrogen gas because hydrogen too has uh, many uses. If, if you ask another industry that can be located near this one, definitely you can have the one for manufacture of hydrochloric acid because you have chlorine there and you have hydrogen at the byproducts. Combining those two, you can manufacture hydrochloric acid. You can also have the one for detergents because sodium hydroxide is used for manufacture of uh, detergents. So I'll just show you the uses of sodium hydroxide uh, shortly after this. So further notes on the same. For those who are writing, you can pause and uh, write. And finally, so that will be the last part of the notes on the mercury cell up to there. So next, let me project for you the uses for sodium hydroxide. And then we conclude that will be the end of that lesson. So briefly, here are the uses of sodium hydroxide, the manufacture of paper. It is in, a, in the manufacture of wood parts in paper industry. Then used in manufacture of soap, manufacture of glass, extraction of aluminium from its ores. As we are going to say, uh, it is used as a, a, in a process called chemical leaching during purification stage or concentration of aluminium. And then finally, it is used in the manufacture of bleaching agents. So there, that will mark the end of our lesson 13. So our lesson 14 will be the last one on electrochemistry and in that lesson we consider the quantitative treatment of electrolysis. Thank you. For those who are accessing me on YouTube, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel so that you can see all the videos that I've done on Form 4 work. You are most welcome and I wish all the candidates all the best.